And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Scotland has a world-class higher education sector. We currently have five universities in the top 200 in the world, and each year students from around 200 nations choose to come to our institutions to study. It is our belief that a child growing up in Scotland, regardless of their background, should have an equal chance of attending one of our great universities. I'm also clear that widening access is not just about access to Freshers' Fair, but to Graduation Day and beyond. Ensuring that students from the most deprived areas of Scotland are supported to achieve their aspirations into, through and beyond higher education is at the core of that. Those end goals of graduation and positive destinations are central to our thinking as we move forward in the delivery of the Commission on Widening Access recommendations and are a key focus and a priority for the government going forward. Presiding officer setting out her first programme for government, the First Minister made a crucial statement, a crucial commitment, telling this chamber that our task was to ensure that a child born today in one of our most deprived communities has no less a chance of going to university than a child born in one of our least deprived communities. She did so because we believe that education is by far the most effective means we have to improve the life chances and, that, and deliver the best possible outcomes for everyone. We have enshrined the principle of widening access in legislation, placing it at the core of what we expect from post-16 institutions and the Scottish Funding Council. We continue to invest £51 million each year to support places for access students and those transferring from college into university. We established the Commission on Widening Access in 2015 and accepted its recommendations in full. And since the publication of the Blueprint for Fairness in 2016, we have embedded our targets within university outcome agreements, introduced a full non-repayable bursary of £7,625 for young care experience students and established an access delivery group to oversee delivery. And to support this work going forward, we have provided universities with a real terms budget increase of 1.9%. And we are making progress. In December, UCAS reported that Scotland reached a new record for the number of acceptances, the only part of the UK to see an increase. And within that, the acceptance rates for 18-year-olds also reached a record increasing for the third year in a row. But more significantly, UCAS also reported a record rise in 18-year-olds from our most deprived communities being accepted. In total, there was a 13% increase in the number of Scots from the most deprived communities getting places to study at a Scottish university. That means over 600 additional people from the most deprived communities being accepted to study at university. So we, so we have a record number of Scots going to university and a record number of Scots from the most deprived communities going to university. That's progress. And sitting behind that progress is a change in perception. We're eating away at the idea that university isn't something any child with the ability can achieve. In fact, just last month, UCAS revealed, and I quote, Scottish 18-year-olds from the most disadvantaged areas are 67% more likely to apply in 2018 than 12 years ago. But we must maintain and indeed quicken the pace of change. As an independent commissioner, Sir Peter Scott's voice and the challenge he has provided to all of us is crucial, not only by providing a fresh perspective on the issues that are central to this agenda, but also in continuing to drive forward change. I'd like to thank Sir Peter for his work over the year. He has established the role of commissioner as one that provides a significant contribution to access in Scotland. This statement provides an opportunity today for me to respond to the commissioner's first annual report. The majority of the Commissioner's recommendations relate to areas we are already driving forward as a result of the Commission on Widening Access. He has provided valuable advice on implementation and he, and he has encouraged bolder steps to be taken by the Scottish Government, the Scottish Funding Council and, in his words, most institutions. I would first like to respond to the Commissioner's call for the Government to make clearer its priorities with regards to our targets and ambitions for access. This government recognises that Scotland's colleges are a key part of our higher education system. They play a crucial and valued role in widening access. Colleges often provide the first step into further and higher education. And while a valued place of study in their own right, they can also be a stepping stone onto degree level study at university. However, we are also clear that students from the most deprived backgrounds are well represented within colleges. It is within our universities where the greatest inequalities lie. Presiding officer, I'm therefore clear that we will continue pr to prioritise access to university within our work and our targets for fair access. 
So let me reiterate once again, no matter their background or circumstances, an applicant should have an equal chance of going to university by 2030. And when we talk about fair access to university, I don't just mean some universities. We expect every university to take action now to ensure that by 2021, 10% of entrants to each university are from Scotland's 20% most deprived backgrounds. Through the delivery group, I believe we will continue to see progress towards meeting these targets, but members should be assured that I will look to the Funding Council to use the outcome agreements process to ensure that delivery is achieved. I must also make it clear that our targets are for learners of all ages. Adult students from similar backgrounds should and will be given the same priority as school leavers within our work on fair access. The framework for fair access will identify the best methods to support adult learners into <coughs> higher education. And I expect learners of all ages to be considered within work to develop a more coordinated approach to access across Scotland. Presiding officer, my vision is of an efficient and flexible tertiary education system within Scotland, a system that supports all learners to succeed. Our work on the learner journey is examining how we can better connect the different parts of our education system and how we can ensure learners' previous education is recognised fairly. I welcome the Commissioner's recommendations on these areas and his insights into how such a system can better support learners from our most disadvantaged communities. As we take forward our work on the learner journey, we will take account of the Commissioner's recommendations on improving the, the importance of access within the learner journey, the need to make more imaginative use of first year at university, option for learners with advanced hires to go directly into second year at university should they wish to do so. The Commissioner also made recommendations on articulation, contextualised admissions and bridging programmes which I fully support. While universities have committed to taking action on all of these points, we need further clarity on when the changes will occur. In each of these universities, in each of these areas, universities need to pick up the pace of change on implementation. I welcome the very detailed work put into the development of implementation plans by lead delivery partners in all these areas, and these will be discussed at the next meeting of the Access Delivery Group. But as with, all, as with the overall and institutional targets which I mentioned earlier, I will look to the Funding Council to further intensify their work in these areas if required. I fully accept the Commissioner's recommendations for the Scottish Funding Council. This Government recognises the pivotal role that the Funding Council must play if we are to deliver fair access. I wrote to the Chair of the Funding Council in October last year to set out my expectations and ambitions for the 2018-19 Outcome Agreement and I've made clear in recent discussions with the Funding Council the way in which I expect them to lead and to coordinate delivery of a number of recommendations from the Commission on Widening Access. Presiding Officer, the Commissioner asked the Scottish Government to consider any savings produced by a reduction in demand for places from EU students. We will take future dis decisions on the higher education budget as part of our annual budgetary process. But for anyone in the sector who may be thinking there is a shortcut to achieving our targets through a drop in demand elsewhere, then let me be very clear. There's no shortcut, there's no silver bullet. Widening access will require systemic change. And the targets and the timescales we have all accepted from the Commission on Widening Access will not be delivered in any other way. I also note the Commissioner's recommendations around an increase in funded places. I fully understand why this recommendation has been made and we will continue to consider its merits. We are conscious, however, that ultimately we are engaged in reforming the system and that is best achieved by the fairer distribution of publicly funded opportunities. In the end, widening access will be achieved by building a fairer system rather than continually, continually expanding an unfair system. And our ambition is for equality throughout that system. Equality not just in access, but also in completing and succeeding in their studies, Equality in the jobs that access graduates can enter once they have finished their degrees and an equal chance for them and their children to succeed. Only then can we create a fairer Scotland. Thank you very much. We move to questions, starting with Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Minister for early sight. Um, I'd like to pursue uh, three areas of questions, if I may. Uh, firstly, Sir Peter Scott said last week at committee, and he stated in his recommendations, and I quote, the fixed cap inevitably raises concerns that the drive to recruit more students from SIMD20 background may reduce opportunities for other students. And that was a point that was reiterated by Audit Scotland. And that's a hugely important point for the wider picture about university entrance and university funding. So can I ask the minister to tell us today whether the Scottish government is minded 
to amend the current structure of funded places. And will the Minister explain exactly, exactly what she means when she says in her concluding remarks that there will be no shortcut to achieving the Scottish Government's targets if there is a drop in demand for places from elsewhere? Because that answer is also crucial for the sector. Secondly, our universities are particularly interested in what Sir Peter has had to say about debating what constitutes academic excellence and the high standards which have traditionally been the hallmark of the Scottish sector. They are wanting to know whether in the context of widening access, the traditional measures of academic excellence and success will be challenged. What is the Scottish Government's response to this? Because that, again, is a crucial question. And finally, can the Scottish Government tell us the timescale by which the universities can expect to receive up-to-date figures on the higher achievement levels of school leavers by the end of S6, equivalent to that published by Vicky Bollinger's research to inform their commitment to set minimum entry levels for SIMD20 students. Minister. Um, on the aspects around uh, displacement, as, as I mentioned um, in my statement, I, I do recognise that this is a concern. Um, from some people. I do, um, I would point uh, Liz Smith to the fact that the Commissioner himself um, has said that the available data on this is suggestive rather than conclusive. So there is a fear of displacement, um, but it's not proven within the statistics we've had. Indeed, as I mentioned in my statement, we've seen a 13% increase in the number of students from the most deprived communities accepted to university. And at the same time, we've seen an overall um, increase in the um, total number of Scottish students within um, university. So I think that's uh, something which I think we can both um, welcome. I mentioned that there's no shortcut when it comes to EU students um, or, or anything else for that matter, because what I don't want us to get into a, a frame of mind about is that we will somehow cure widening access by hoping that enough places will become available when something which certainly on this side of the chamber we don't want to happen in Brexit um, will, will lead to changes in demand. I don't want universities to sit by and hope and um, assume that they will get enough widening access students in because something else will happen and we don't know the scale and extent of that. So we need to see systemic change to encourage um, those from deprived communities from coming forward. Um, I listened to um, Sir Peter Scott's um, evidence to the committee um, and his discussions um, around success. Again, as I mentioned in my statement, I want to ensure that we're looking at successful outcomes from those who go into widening access uh, places. And by successful outcomes, I mean graduation day and a good job at the end of it, a graduate job at the end of it. So I, I do appreciate that uh, Sir Peter uh, discussed um, with the committee around um, changes um, to um, how a student can perhaps get from one year to another and looking at whether the system needs to be more flexible. That's for <laughs> universities uh, to look into. But when we're looking at what success is, success is a degree and a good degree at the end of your time at university. And that's why we're talking about not just getting into university, but also from graduation days. And uh, we, I have committed to University Scotland to, to um, work with them to ensure that they have information around um, uh, aspects to do with what happens within individual schools and around academic achievement. I would say, however, and I think the Commissioner made this point as well, universities don't need that information to set um, minimum entry requirements. Those are based on what you need um, as a student uh, to, to get through and succeed in your degree. So universities don't need that information. It may prove useful for them in other avenues that they're intending to do, but they need to get on with the job of moving on with contextualised admissions and minimum entry requirements. We can't afford to wait another year for another round of data and seeing another year of students not getting access to the university places that they should have. Ian Gray. Thank you, presiding officer, and uh, thank you to the minister for early sight of her statement. The minister uh, knows that we on these benches support her aims of widening access to higher education in general uh, and to universities in particular. 
and such progress uh, as we have made is very welcome. Uh, but what's especially welcome uh, today, I think, is the Minister's assertion, which she just repeated, that this is not just about access to Freshers' Fair, uh, but to Graduation Day uh, and beyond. And she's right. Uh, living and surviving a university is important, as well as getting there in the first instance. That's why uh, those full, non-repayable bursaries are so important for care-experienced students. But surely... The Minister can see then that access to non-repayable bursaries and grants to live on while studying are also critical to young people from deprived backgrounds considering university because they too will not be able to turn to their families for financial help. Will she then commit to restoring the cuts made to grants and shifting the balance between grants and loans for living back towards grants? for those students from low-income backgrounds? Minister. Well, can I begin by the fact uh, that Ian Gray and I agree on something? I think that doesn't often happen when, I'm, when we're doing statements. So um, it is very important that we do recognise the importance of graduate, um, graduation day and, and beyond. So I'll, I'll take that part and the, the consensual part of your, your comments. Um, the review of, of student support, as, as Ian Gray well knows, um, um, reported at the end of last year, and the government is due to um, report back on, on our um, uh, conclusions around that, those recommendations um, soon. Um, we are looking very, very seriously at um, all aspects of the student support, um, including bursaries. Um, I hope Ian Gray can take some assurance from the fact that the work that officials are doing um, with uh, the recommendations that came from that review is based on the first principle of ensuring that those from our most deprived communities um, get the, the, the support that they require to get through university. That's the front principle that we're looking at when we're looking at all the recommendations and all the areas where the review has asked us to do further investigation. Thank you. I'm going to call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Just before I do, just to remind members, I do give the opening speakers from each part, Labour and Conservative Party's dispensation to make an opening few remarks to outline the party position. That dispensation does not apply to everybody else, unfortunately. So that means that the rest have to just ask questions and they'll get a quick answer and we'll get through everybody. So, Ruth Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Minister agree that whatever barriers people face before they get to university, they don't simply disappear the second they get a place? And with students from disadvantaged or non-traditional backgrounds less likely to stay until second year, more likely to obtain a general degree rather than honours, and less likely to get a first or a 2-1, um, what is the Scottish Government doing to encourage universities to attach higher priority to retention and success and achievement in the context of widening access? Minister. Well, the Scottish Funding Council's Widening Access and Attention Fund uh, provides £14.7 million of funding in 2017-18 to help students remain in higher education, and that's allocated to universities that the highest intake of access students. We're also ensuring that we use the outcome agreements process uh, to um, encourage the universities to set more ambitious and challenging targets uh, for access. They also have to agree improvements in the retention and attainment and outcomes uh, for their students. So our work with the Funding Council to intensify that outcome agreement process um, is ensuring that we look not just in entry into university, but also to retention and attainment as well. Oliver Mundell to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, presiding officer. Can I ask the minister in the context of recommendations 17 and 18 in Sir Peter's report, how the Scottish Government will ensure that pupils from SIMD 20 have more access to advanced higher courses, which will help their chance of taking up more diverse opportunities at university? Minister. Well, that is something which uh, we are looking at within our um, learner journey work that the Scottish Government is, is currently undertaking. It is very important that we ensure that students at uh, school um, have uh, opportunities to uh, study 
um, in, uh, and take up opportunities, whether it's a college, university, or indeed um, within apprenticeships, um, and that they have that opportunity um, to follow the career in whichever way they so choose. Jangle Ruth to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I remind members and the PLO to the Education Secretary. Uh, can the Minister outline what role our schools and colleges will play in helping to meet the targets set by the Commission on Widening Access? And would she consider the feasibility of a pilot study tracking the work of St Andrews University as an ancient institution and a local high school in my constituency where nearly, nearly one in three children live in poverty? Minister. Well, I'm, I'm very interested in tracking the, the progress um, of all the universities. Um, I, I can ensure and, and take a, a close note on that, but I would welcome um, the work that the new principal um, of St Andrews has undertaken um, to, to give further impetus to the widening access agenda. Um, I did make clear in my statement that colleges are, play a, a very crucial role in our higher education system and in widening access. But we also need to ensure that we are working with primary and secondary schools where most of our young people have developing their dreams, their ambitions, their future lives and careers. So we are looking at this um, from a whole systems approach. That's why I'm delighted um, to see that um, within the next couple of weeks we'll have a, a seminar where regional improvement co collaborate leads will come together um, to discuss what more can be done um, to, to develop that whole systems approach. And we have Peter McLeod, who sits on our access delivery group, who will be um, leading that seminar. It is very, very important that we encourage our young people um, to develop uh, their, their dreams and ambitions, regardless of where they will finally achieve that, whether it's that's employment, college, university and apprentices. And of course, I should uh, mention, particularly in this apprenticeship week, uh, that that's an exceptionally important outcome that young people can also take up. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Ross Greer. The Minister in her statement pointed to institutions in the Scottish Funding Council in terms of addressing the issues around articulation and contextualised admission. But given that the fundamental issue there is about differences of approach between institutions, is there not a role for government in terms of bringing forward a harmonised and coordinated system? Is that something that the delivery group might look at? Because ultimately, the Minister surely will agree with me that having a clear view about how youngsters can get to university is ultimately important. Minister. Yes, um, I do absolutely see that there's a role for government for, uh, to encourage um, articulation. Our role, um, certainly within the, the next few months, um, will be demonstrated when I finalise my letter of guidance, which goes to the Funding Council, uh, which again will look at the intensification of our outcome agreement process. Uh, within that will include um, our work on articulation. I think uh, Sir Peter Scott raised uh, very valid points um, around articulation. Um, I was interested to, to read his um, views and to discuss with him uh, last week um, an assumption that young people should have um, full articulation rather than there, there, there being a presumption um, against that. And that was a very interesting uh, discussion that I had. So I do see that there's a role for government. Uh, that is through um, my letter of guidance to the Funding Council and for them to put through their outcome agreements with the different institutions um, how we will take that on. Uh, but, you can, uh, but the member can be um, assured that uh, we will be discussing this in the Access Delivery Group to see what more can be done by the government, by the Funding Council and by every institution. Ross Beard, be followed by Tavish Scott. Thank you. The cost of liveth, uh, living of everything from rent to transport remains a barrier to widening access and current financial support for students from low income backgrounds simply does not cut it. Following Ian Gray's question, can I press the Scottish Government to commit to increasing bursaries and to equalising support for university and college students, which is essential to successfully widening access to higher education? Minister. As I, I said to, to Ian Gray, the, the government will be responding to the recommendations um, of the review of um, student support um, in due course. And we will be looking at um, the, the aspects which were in the review and um, also looking to see how we need to cover, um, carry out further investigations um, which the, the review asked the government um, to do. There were some areas which the review did not look at and they've made clear that they want the government to then pick that up and investigate um, certain areas. Um, I would of course point out that we have put um, an initial 
um, £5 million into the budget um, for initial implementation of that um, and other aspects within the review of student support um, will require uh, um, longer implementation if they require, for example, changes to the uh, student's loans company or uh, discussions with Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Tavish Scott to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I thank the Minister for early sight of her statement as well? And could I also um, ask her to recognise that vocational routes into work uh, this week in Apprenticeship Week are every bit as important as a university uh, education, given um, I and no doubt many other colleagues met apprentices in, in Lerwick and Scalloway uh, yesterday. Um, can I have a further go on the line of questioning that Ian Gray and Ross Greer have, have pushed? Would she hope that the review of student support would be in place for the next academic year? Uh, and would she be able to give Parliament any details of the timescale she's uh, working to on that, given that the very students that we're seeking to, uh, seeking to help here uh, from the most disadvantaged backgrounds appear from some evidence to be the very ones who are seeing uh, more difficult circumstances in terms of the debt burden that they then face. Minister. I, I would um, absolutely re reiterate once again that it is important that um, we encourage young people to take the uh, destination after school that's right for them. Um, universities, colleges, um, directly into employment or apprenticeships are, are all equally valid and valued opportunities uh, for our young people. So the government's commitment to ensuring uh, widening access for university uh, should by no means be read um, as a sign that um, university is the right aspect for, for a young person to choose. It's up to that young person, depending on their ambitions and their careers. And I did see the pictures um, of the member um, with the apprentices and uh, it looked a, a thoroughly interesting um, visit. Uh, the review of student support, as I said, um, looked at a, a number of uh, different uh, challenges that we have within the student support system. Some of those um, will be able to be achieved for the next academic year. Others uh, will not. If they require, for example, a change to the student's loans company um, rule book, then that will uh, require us uh, to look at um, a, a longer um, time, time period for that. Um, if we didn't, if we simply piggybacked on um, a, um, a system, a scheme that's already in place, there may be a disadvantage to that. For example, um, we would have to join the system that's already in England uh, with a higher um, interest rate. So there are um, uh, disadvantages to moving fast if by doing that you actually uh, join a system um, that, that um, is detrimental particularly to those from um, the poorest backgrounds. That does not mean that the government isn't taking action on this um, issue. Uh, however, we have already taken action to ensure that the an almost 3,000 additional students qualified for a non-repayable bursary or saw their funding increased last, last year due to our decision to raise the income threshold from 17 to 19,000 pounds. And we've confirmed within the programme for government um, our commitment to raising the repayment threshold for student loans to 22,000 and reducing the repayment period to 30 years, as well as implementing the care experience bursary. So we are taking action on this. We will take action for the next financial year um, where we can, but there will be other aspects of the review of student support that will take longer. Fulton McGregor. In terms of universities accepting young people from more disadvantaged areas, it seems that there's a real disparity between universities. Would the Minister agree with me that meeting these ambitious targets we've set can't simply be down to the work of just some of our universities and it's time for our older universities to work a bit harder on this? Yes, sir. Well, I've made it very clear in my expectations to the sector that uh, when we talk about widening access to university, I don't just mean some of the universities, I mean to each university. The UCAS figures published in January demonstrate good progress is being made in widening access, with the majority of universities uh, showing an increase in place applicants from deprived areas. However, targets have been set for individual institutions and I'm determined that they will all be achieved. People from the most deprived backgrounds should have the same choices as everyone else. So I'll not get into a position where we're pushing a few institutions who are already performing well to pick up the responsibility for delivering this agenda. Every institution can and must play their part in widening access. Now my apologies, I'm afraid four members didn't get in there, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. We've got too many items this afternoon. So we move on now to the local government finance order and I'll just uh, take a few moments for members and ministers to change seats.